Well, hello, pre-calculus students and seekers of general truths. In this video, we discuss the topic of decay, exponential decay in particular, and half-life. And half-life is a term that comes up often in chemistry, biology, um, in some cases in physics as well. And it basically means it's the amount of time required to reduce the amount to a, a, a certain amount of substance by a factor of one half. Okay, so, uh, and I think it's better to do an example and engage with the question here. So uh, cortisone has a biological half-life of nine hours. If a person receives a 25 milligram dose, how much cortisone will be in his bloodstream after 13 hours? And so this is um, how we can illustrate half-life. Let's say we have time here as measured in hours and then the amount of cortisol, so I'll just say C here, uh, uh, measured in milligrams. Okay. So initially there is 25 milligrams, uh, and then after nine hours, this is the, this is the half-life of it, so now there's only 12.5, okay, or 25 over two milligrams left. Then after 18 hours, there's going to be half of that. So this is going to be 6.25 milligrams after 18 hours and so on. So every nine hours that elapses, the amount of cortisol that's in a person's bloodstream reduced by half of what it was nine hours ago. Okay. And so we want to figure out at 13, you know, around at 13 hours, how much was there, okay? And we can use this table as a sort of a way of uh, putting some reasonable estimates. It's gonna be something between 6.25 and 12.5. So between nine and, so 13 really goes in here in the table, right? Between nine and 18 hours, we, we're gonna have somewhere between six and 12.5 milligrams, okay? And so let's approach this in a exponential algebraic approach. So I'm gonna make my function C of T. It's an exponential function, so it's gonna be A times B to the T power. All right, now we know a few things that we can, and our goal here is to really just, just solve for A and B. Um, this solving for a is going to be the simplest thing so if we know that we put in zero for time so we have a b to the zeroth power so we know that the 25 is just going to be equal to a that's the initial amount so we can update our function and say that c of t is equal to 25 times b to the tth power and then we could use any of these values in the table, 9 and 12.5 or 18 and 6.25. Either one is perfectly fine. Um, we'll use, I'm just going to use 9 and 12.25. So when the amount of time that's elapsed is 9 hours, then there are only 12.5 milligrams of this substance left in the bloodstream. And we're going to use this equation and solve for b our base divide both sides by 25 and we get one half okay. is equal to b to the to the ninth power and in order to undo this nine up here uh, we can raise both sides by one ninth because b to the ninth through the one ninth is just b right, so we're going to raise this side as well to the ninth power to, to the one ninth power. And that tells me that, so the, on the right side of the equation, nine times one ninth is just one, so we have b. And over here, we have one half to the one ninth power. Okay. That's equal to b. So our equation is now c of t is equal to the initial amount, which is 25, times the base which is one half to the one ninth. Okay. And all of that raised to the tieth power. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna clean this up and simplify it just a little bit further. And I'm gonna say this is equal to 25 times one half. And instead of one ninth times t, I'm just gonna write t over nine. 
Okay, so this is our function um, that we that takes in time and produces the, the amount of cortisol that's in the bloodstream. And once we have this equation set up, the rest of this work is fairly simple. How much cortisone will be in the bloodstream after 13 hours? Well, we just plug in 13, right? So C of 13 is going to be 25 times 1 half raised to the 13th over 9th. Okay? Um, use our calculator. And we get approximately 9.186 milligrams. Okay? So, and this is a reasonable number because we said it's going to be between 6.25 and 12.5. All right. So there you go. Um, so this is an example of how we use half-life. And it's really, half-life is just a special case of an exponential function. Uh, it gives us certain particular values in this table here that we can then use to figure out the constants in our equation. Then we can use that equation to solve for any other particular moment in time that we're looking for. All right, as always, thank you for watching. Keep working hard and ask questions when you need it. Have a wonderful day.